how far along is Astrobotic in being ready to send a lunar lander with a giant payload to the moon? Well, first off, thank you so much. We are so thrilled and excited. It's, it's a story that's 12 years in the making for us, and we are thrilled to be leading America back to the moon. Um, so our, our lander will take 28 payloads up to the surface of the moon, 14 NASA and 14 non-NASA payloads, and this is the beginning of a whole new era of routine regular access on the surface of the moon. Meantime, Chad, on his way back from Europe, the president had something to say about NASA sending folks to the moon, saying, for all the money we're spending, NASA should not be talking about going to the moon. We did that 50 years ago. They should be focused on the much bigger things we're doing, including Mars, parentheses, of which the moon is a part, defense and science. Chad, your reaction? Yeah, so I'm going to struggle to, to speak directly to that, but um, right before I was walking in here, I was picking up that the White House put out a statement um, talking about how uh, he was reaffirming um, their commitment in going to the moon as a, a way to get to Mars. And the Mars-Moon debate has been uh, raging amongst uh, space circles for a long time. It, it goes back to the o Obama uh, NASA uh, agency. and so. Um, the moon is seen as a place, as a staging ground to understand how to operate on Mars. I mean, when we go to Mars, we're going to have to be there for two years. And so um, this is what Bridenstine was, was mentioning this morning in his, in his remarks, was, was talking about um, the importance of learning how to live off the land um, and be able to stay on Mars for, for a couple of years. So, John, of the three companies that have been chosen, Astrobotic is going to be carrying the biggest payloads. And as I understand it, the goal is to get to sort of DHL style deliveries that happen regularly. What exactly are you going to be taking up there? What exactly would you be delivering on a regular basis? That's right. We want to make the moon accessible to the world. Uh, and what that means is taking uh, payloads from all over the world, from all different space agencies, corporations, uh, even universities. Um, so for us, our first mission is a mix of rovers, science instruments, experiments to go up to the surface of the moon, uh, and, e and even the beginnings of infrastructure, like a laser communication system that will dramatically increase the bandwidth possibilities in deep space, uh, as well as the early beginnings of resource extraction from the surface of the moon. If we can learn to live off the land of the moon and actually produce rocket fuel, for example, is one of the first commodities in space, um, that could be transformative uh, for our transport uh, to and from the moon and even probably one of the best ways to get to Mars. Um, so the moon truly is the best pathway uh, to reach our ultimate goal of Mars. And the landers are expected to fly in 2020, 2021. How far away are we, are you, from sending a human up there? So we're primarily focused on robotic landers for, for the near uh, future. We've got small uh, ro uh, landers and rovers that are going to be going up on the early missions. Uh, we actually have a lander that's twice as big as our early mission, so we are scaling up uh, in time. Uh, but the robotic side of uh, flying to, to the moon is going to consume us for quite some time. And when the humans are ready to go, uh, we're going to need robots to scout the area. We're going to need robots to, to collect and gather the resources and refine it. Uh, we're going to need robots to uh, build the settlement sites and clear land, uh, well, clear the area for, for landers uh, to land and make sure that they don't interfere with the, the habitats. Um, so robots are going to be a key part in uh, concert with the humans uh, when we're uh, exploring the moon and eventually that same architecture for Mars. Meantime, Chad, NASA saying you can, they're going to open up visits to the ISS for $50 million. What's your take on NASA opening up space tourism to very wealthy civilians? Yeah, that was the headline that I took away as well, <laughs> private astronauts. Um, it's very exciting. I mean, there's, it's really um, uh, two parts. Uh, NASA is, is making the space station more accessible. So you heard uh, the CFO talking about research and manufacturing in space. They're also um, making NASA astronaut time available. Um, and controversially, they're also making um, some marketing opportunities available um, and, uh, you know, private astronauts as well. So that's really supplying the market with more space station. Um, they're also uh, uh, supporting the demand side as well by, by supporting uh, these new commercial uh, uh, habitats that are being, um, uh, that are in development. And NASA's really giving them an idea as to how much demand they would want, um, how much time that they could book, and, and being a, an important early tenant for those, for those habitats. So Chad, where 
do SpaceX, Blue Origin, um, Virgin Galactic, where do they fit into NASA's efforts today? They play a very key role, and they're the ones that have really opened up uh, space and the entire space economy for the new entrants that we're seeing today. Um, it is the lowering of, of, of cost and making their pricing transparent that has allowed for these new business plans to get funded and for these new innovative ideas um, uh, to be realized. And so um, just today on the heels of this NASA announcement, Bigelow has announced that they've put down um, a, a substantial deposit on uh, four SpaceX launch vehicles to take those private astronauts to the space station. So um, SpaceX will be taking um, these private astronauts, Boeing will as well. Um, and uh, they will be taking a number of, of these uh, commercial lunar payload services companies as well.